Who doesn't love starting off the day sending cease and desist letters? Positive vibes. I feel like I've hit Monday a little bit too hard. Need to update you guys on the drama. Do you want me to bankrupt my business to pay for your furniture? Reason 3229 why I love being self-employed. I promise I was wearing clothes earlier. That's it, that is a number that I love to see though. $35,000 in a month. Can we take a moment for the slippers? How cute are these? It's not cold enough to wear them yet, but I wear them. I used to be the biggest Dyson fangirl and would tell everybody like last year and the year before that the Dyson was like the best thing that I bought. This is the um, Airwrap Dyson, by the way. But a few weeks ago, I went back and used my GHDs and I was like, have I just been living in denial this whole time because of like how much money you spend on an air wrap that I'm like, it has to be good because I'd been doing my hair with the GHDs and I was like, damn, this looks nice. But anyway, food for thought, food for thought. Let me know if anyone else has an air wrap and has the same feeling. Probably more exciting than the Dyson air wrap is the bottle of champagne sitting on my desk. No, I'm not about to crack open some champagne on a Monday morning by myself. But I wanted to show this to you guys because I think it's really fun to talk about like goals, things that I'm working on behind the scenes in my business, and this all ties into this bottle of champagne. So back in January, Ali and I saw this TikTok where couples were doing goal setting together and they were writing the goals on champagne bottles. So the idea is when you achieve your goal, you can pop the bottle of champagne, which was quite fun. We did three each. And one of mine is hitting my first 50k a month. And I wanted to go through this with you guys. I'm gonna check in on my accounting. It is currently the 18th of March, and we've had a stellar, stellar, stellar month <laughs> after some not so great months. <coughs> Cough, a few negative revenue months. But it's okay, that's a larger topic of like investing in your business so you can achieve the results like this. And I think I think it's paying off. But I thought it would be fun to do a bit of a finance check-in, accounting check-in, see how far off I am from this, this goal because I didn't expect it to be something that I could realistically achieve or even get close to <laughs> in March. So I don't think I will, but I thought we'd check in, let's have a look. I'm very big on having my goals out on display to show me every day. My office, I have my vision board. In our last vlog, I showed you guys our house deposit saving goals that we have on our fridge. And with our champagne goals, we each picked one of our kind of like favorite goals. <laughs> um, we have displayed it on our little drinks cabinet here. And I just think they look super cute. I can't remember if I mentioned in my last vlog, but I did fire my accountant and hire a new one because they just made too many mistakes. And I understand we're humans, we all make mistakes, I make mistakes. But when it's your accountant messing up your GEST filing and stuff, it's just, it's a no for me. So this is all my receipts. Um, some of them I have added to my accounting software, but I'm gonna go through, update some of my receipts so that I can also track expenses because a 50K month is exciting, but you also have to track and make sure you're not spending $50,000 to get there, right? Like we want some profit, profit margins gotta be good. I feel like I suddenly got nervous to open up my accounting software. It's like not the most fun <laughs> thing to do as an entrepreneur, um, but you know what? I think filming this and giving you guys some insights makes it fun for me. So, so the process begins with getting all my receipts out. And I really, I just wanna get rid of these today so that I can file them. Gosh, I really did live up large in uh, February meeting people. So we don't have many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think we've got 10. So I have my accounting app on my phone and then also on my computer. So I can take photos of the receipts and add them to my software. That way I have like photographic records of all my receipts and then I can just file them away. But like I don't have to haul out my, you know, bundle of receipts for everything. Receipts have been added to accounting software. Now we get to file them. Again, making accounting fun. Get yourself a little cute filing compartments. 
I'm quite excited because with my new accountant, I'm not actually going to be doing all of this reconciling myself on a monthly basis. So that's going to be a big change for me and something that I have proudly done myself for a long time. Oh, so we switch from the credit card to the bank account. All my payment providers, I use both Stripe and PayPal. So when it comes into my account, there's a little bit of reconciling and tracking. And if it's a New Zealand payment, I pay GST on it. If it's international, I don't. So there's like a bit of faffing around with that. So let's, let's get into it. Let's do the tally up. March 18th, cash in hand. Oof, only 23,000. 200. Let's take a look at what is to come from Stripe. 4,200 in client invoices to come. Okay, here we go. Alan's time to shine and attempt to do maths. We're going to calculate up cash in hand for the month, which is $23,000, plus outstanding client invoices, plus recurring payment plans from PayPal, and then payments that are still processing through Stripe because sometimes they make, they take a week to process. So technically the payment is there. It's just not on my bank account yet. I mean, let's just take a second to appreciate that it's the 18th of the month and I've already made $23,000. That will probably be around ten dollars to $13,000 pure profit just from an estimate from previous months as well. One equals, ooh, $35,800. So I would need to collect another $15,000. I think we can shoot for 40. I think I can finally crack that, which I haven't done, out done yet. I'm trying to get to 50K and I haven't actually cracked 40. So realign, we're not popping, popping the champagne yet, but we are gonna make an extra 5K happen in the next two weeks before the month ends. Positive vibes. That's it, that is a number that I love to see though. $35,000 in a month. See what I mean about this is how you make the accounting fun? Like I rewarded myself by like checking out the income after I'd done the expenses. sure this is only like the second punnet of strawberries that I have bought all summer because they've been so expensive and I just I just can't get over the fact how expensive berries are now like when did this happen really I just get frozen berries for my smoothies but like how delicious I couldn't resist with a bowl of yogurt for my afternoon snack I have migrated to the couch for the afternoon with my laptop to finish off the rest of my work really productive day lots of emails lots of client admin I also scheduled up around eight posts for the McKinsey Studios Instagram account I do need now to put one client Instagram post live I've planned out all of my content for the next couple of weeks as part of the Instagram group coaching program that I've been beta testing at the moment so I wrote up like a whole workbook for them for our three-week challenge that we're doing together Together, did all of these like prompts and research for them so I really hope that they like that and I am building up to launching that Instagram group coaching program which I'm very excited about so make sure you're following me on Instagram if you want all the latest on that now I have on my list today to set up mini chat for one of my clients and plan slash storyboard some reels uh, for a client shoot that I'm gonna do later this week but I'm gonna film it for like another vlog I think I'm gonna do like a UGC content creation day um, so that will be coming soon I feel like I've hit Monday a little bit too hard. Like so much energy, excitement, do all the things. And now it's like 6.30 and I'm, my brain is like Ugh. I don't usually have wine on a Monday, but we, this is leftover wine that we didn't finish on the weekend. And I can't let it go to waste. That would just be rude. So this is quite a lovely treat. So many things happening. So many projects being juggled. I did draft up some ideas for my client videos that I'm going to shoot later in the week. That's rude. My memory card ran out of space. It's almost like I've talked too much today. So anyway, my strategies to generate extra cash in my business. I've done financial forecasting in terms of how many offers I need to sell, how many courses I need to sell a month to hit certain income goals. And a hitting a 50k month is the first part of that. And I have sort of unpacked how many course sales I need in a month to do that as well as my client work. 
And for me, I'm just not getting the number of course sales. And this has been an ongoing goal of mine for over a year now. So I'm kind of pivoting a little bit and it's like, okay, what other revenue streams can we tap into this year? So I've been looking at more sponsored content. So I had my first, if you guys follow my podcast, my first sponsor on the podcast, which is so freaking exciting and such a big deal because I have just poured time, money, love, effort, everything, energy into that podcast for free for the past two years. So it's really nice to just have a sponsor for just for, for two months. And one project I think I'm just going to chip away at this evening is setting up some more affiliate account accounts. So for those of you unfamiliar, affiliate sales is basically when you share a product or in my case, like a digital product or a digital service, something like the, the software that I'm using, you get paid uh, a certain almost like commission fee or a referral fee for bringing them a new customer. So for example, for my website Kajabi, which I just love, I am just such a fangirl of Kajabi. I use that to sell my courses, use it for my email newsletter, my podcast host. It's just brilliant and I have a referral code for that. So if someone signs up using my referral code, using my discount, using my link, then they, I get like a commission from that sale. And it's something that's made up a very small part of my revenue. Small, I mean like almost non-existent for some years. And I just feel like it's something that I'm not tapping into enough in my business at the moment because that is like the most passive income and also very organic kind of income and in that I can mention to my audience hey I use this really cool product I genuinely pay for it I genuinely love it and then just make a very small commission it all adds up most affiliate links will be only like two or three percent sometimes more which is lovely but it, it does add up and if I'm somewhere in that 40k range and I'm just looking for like an extra couple of thousand dollars a month to help boost me up for me, it is the sponsorships, it's the affiliate sales. I think that could help me. So I'm going to use this as a little bit of motivation because I've been meaning to set up a like toolbox hub on my website, which will feature all affiliate links. I've been meaning to set that up for like months and months. So now we're going to do it because we are seeing how close we are to the milestone and we need some help to push over the finish line. So it's not really going to help me this month, but it is thinking ahead for future months. love starting off the day sending cease and desist letters. There are so many things like this that happen to business owners that I wish people talked about more publicly but then I go through them and I kind of understand why you don't talk about it online. Like in this situation where there's people stealing and profiting off your content, you don't really want to draw attention to those people doing illegal sneaky things. But that is the reality of what I deal with a lot behind the scenes in running an online business. Not so fun but part of the package I guess, part of what happens. I do have a team of contractors that I work with who help me like protect my copyrighted material um, but sometimes it's too like expensive to always rely on using those services so I do a few things to support them myself. I'd been putting it off and I woke up this morning and I was like you know what we're gonna do all of the things that are have, you know when you have like things on your to-do list and they're actually really small tasks like it's only going to take you 30 minutes to do but for some reason there's like this mental wall where you're like oh my god I don't want to do that <laughs> so I did those emails and then I also sent off some Amazon vouchers that I've been meaning to send to a group of my students who'd helped me with some um, survey responses and some student interviews and things and again such a small task but like I, I hate those like ad many things like emails and you know sending vouchers and that kind of stuff like I enjoy the creative stuff. I enjoy making podcasts, editing content, and that is where I tend to gravitate towards with like my to-do list and I'll do everything that's creative and fun and then leave the boring admin stuff. So we have that out of the way now. Also did some like life admin, selecting a food delivery online, planning that out. And then I had to deal with this dress that I ordered last week, like almost a week ago. And I just got an email this morning being like, sorry, our stock levels were incorrect. That dress is out of stock. And I'm like, 
that's rude. <laughs> it's taken you that long to realize that you don't have it in stock. But luckily they have like a size eight in stock and it's quite like a loose fitting kind of like smock dress. And it's a brand that I've rented before and their sizes I think tend to run kind of small. So I have worn an eight in their dresses before, which was more form fitting. So I'm pretty sure the eight is gonna fit me, fingers crossed. There was a lot of backwards and forth with that. And then just doing some more admin, getting some posts up, doing some client work. And all of a sudden, it's literally almost midday. I don't know, I don't know how this happened. On my to-do list, still to go, we have edit a YouTube video. We have write my UGC trainings. I'm doing some trainings for all my students. Obviously my school, or my program, the Dishing Up Digital School, is about social media management, but I think social media management and user-generated content, like those services, kind of go together. So for a while I've been meaning to add in like a new bonus module that's for, that talks specifically about UGC. And I was like, hey, let me just like teach it live to my students and then add it into the existing course material. So I need to write the trainings for that because the first live class is tomorrow. I also have another studio viewing and I am just in the process of hiring our new studio assistant and I'm so excited that I will not have to do all of these studio viewings. <laughs> I'm kind of losing the will to work already, which is not good. So I think, I think I'm gonna work from the couch with some YouTube, write out this lesson plan, and then we'll go to the meeting, then we'll come back, do some editing on the YouTube video, then we'll head to the gym. Reason 3229 why I love being self-employed. Just got back from the gym and the day got away from me and I ended up going to the gym at five o'clock, which I haven't done in a long time. And I just forget how damn busy it is. Like there were so many people. I literally couldn't even find a, an area on the floor to squat, let alone a machine to use. <laughs> I'd been doing um, cable kickbacks or kickbacks on the cable machine and literally was like trying to find an angle that I could kick my foot back and not like literally kick someone. And I'd sussed out my space, I was all ready to go, turn back to the machine, kick my foot back and then I hit someone who just came out of nowhere. Like it was just, it was too busy, I did not like it. So now we have uh, come home to do the stretches and then I need to walk back to the studio just to put up one of our security cameras so I will do a little bit of a cool down walk instead and call it a day. <clears throat> I promise I was wearing clothes earlier. I did a live stream for my students. Now I am having some breakfast and I'm about to jump on a call for the mastermind, the business mastermind that I'm in. We have a pod call, so it's a group that I'm in. We have like monthly trainings together. There's like a big group of like a hundred of us. And then we break down and we do monthly pod calls where we kind of like mastermind and chat about our business. I am very big on investing in your business, investing in yourself. So I'm always in some sort of group coaching program, some sort of mastermind. I think it really is proven to have helped my business massively. So we're gonna get ready for that and I'll probably have to put my blazer back on but this is just cozy. I just wanted to be comfy after my live, okay? I had to talk a lot, a one hour solid teaching and I just, I just wanted to be snug again. <laughs> the way that TikTok is just like rotting my brain at the moment, I can see it doing it and I can see the correlation between an unproductive day and a productive day and the amount of time that I spend on TikTok but I like can't stop. And it's so funny because I was really struggling to get back into my work after my lunch break. I literally had longest lunch break, rid of my book, fell asleep on the couch, had like an hour long nap and was like, oh my God, dragging my feet to get back to work. What I did was, was stop TikTok obviously. <laughs> and I put on a YouTube video just to get me like back into the, the rhythm of, I was editing a YouTube video. So like a little bit of inspo there. And it's just so interesting how like a YouTube video gets me really motivated. Maybe because I watch a lot of vlogs. Um, it's either a vlog or it's like a business educational video. So they're inspirational in that sense. But like compared to TikTok, I just get sucked into like scrolling and I just, it doesn't make me feel good. And I just get stuck in this hole versus YouTube can like really inspire me and like get me motivated. And it worked and it worked. So I think, I need to introduce some like stricter boundaries in terms of my TikTok usage time. As I said, 
have edited a YouTube video. Today's been busy. I had my mastermind meeting. Just been like chipping away at the to-do list. But honestly, the large majority has been working on this YouTube video. I needed to get it edited and sent to the sponsor for approval. And I really don't think people understand how long it takes to edit a YouTube video. Like in the space that I edited that YouTube video and like I really tried with adding more like overlays and text and cuts and things and even then like I, there's so much more I could have done but I honestly just got lazy and I was like this needs to be done, this needs to be over. And it's just shocking to me how much time and energy it takes in terms of the filming and the editing process for good YouTube content. Like I could have edited six TikTok videos in that time which is just crazy to me. I have been the worst vlogger today but we can start fresh tomorrow and I'm gonna head to my parents house for dinner this evening. Oh my gosh, has my mascara looked like this the entire time that I've been filming? I apologize. <laughs> what a plot twist. Obviously just got out of the shower. Need to update you guys on the drama. <laughs> I am so upset right now and the only reason I'm not crying is because I'm also simultaneously so angry and I think the anger is the current leading emotion so we'll probably cry a bit later on today. So now I'm running a business is really freaking hard. So I just got an email from our furniture sponsor for the studio and they're pulling all of their furniture. All of it just out of the blue, randomly. I was under the impression that we would have it for at least a year. That was kind of our agreement. We were giving them discounted studio space. We were giving them so many features on our social pages, all for free, just in exchange for a loan of furniture. And apparently their boss has just been like, nah, we're pulling it. And I, like, this may not sound like a big deal to you guys, but they're offering to sell it to us for $7,000. And yeah, it's a good deal for the, you know, the quality of the furniture and stuff, but we don't have $7,000. Like, do you want me to bankrupt my business to pay for your furniture? And to do it so like out of the blue, I have not heard from them for like months. The big issue here is we have obviously sold bookings for the studio through to April. And there's an expectation for what's gonna be in the studio for those bookings with people that have already paid and booked in and we even have a wedding and they're going to be using the sofas as part of their seating arrangement for their ceremony and now I have to be like oh I'm sorry that furniture's not going to be there and that just makes me look like an idiot and I hate disappointing our customers and clients like that and I was meant to be having a nice day with my friend Daniel who's over from Australia and we were going to Waikiki and now just like I have this to deal with and I don't I don't know what to do like we are just in the process of finalizing the contract for the new studio assistant we wanted to hire. So all of our business savings have been set up to dedicate to that role, to pay that person for the next few months. And it's just like, what do I do now? Do I have to like not hire that person and buy furniture? Am I gonna have to thrift furniture and upcycle furniture to do it on the flip side? Like it's just, it wasn't in my financial forecasting for the next few months. So it's just like a massive curveball. And I'm just, oh, this is probably the worst thing, one of the worst things that could happen to the studio. I mean, maybe I shouldn't dramatize it because I know like deep down, like if I want to, I can find another brand who's going to partner with us, who does see our value. And this was my issue from the beginning was like not feeling like brands valued the studio and then the social content I was creating for them. And I also know that I'm an entrepreneur. I'm good at this stuff. I'm good at dealing with issues and pivoting and just making things work but I'm just like overwhelmed by this feeling of just like gutted at the moment like it's the only thing I can explain I think like that's a very kiwi term like I'm gutted about this but it's just it's it's honestly such a hard hit for a business that's only been open for like eight months and now I still need to do my hair and makeup and catch a free fairy probably gonna be late for the fairy <sighs> Just when you think everything is going so good, life will throw you a curveball. Today has 
it's just been one of those like entrepreneurial days that's just not worth vlogging and to be honest this is like the majority of the days in my week but I've just been at my computer I taught one live training I had a client meeting and then what else? I say I recorded a podcast interview prepped the contract for our new studio assistant and they signed that straight away so that's like exciting we're like actually doing this so <laughs> we've hired a person it's been very sluggish today, very slow. I am so tired and I don't really know why, but you know, sometimes this happens some weeks. We are just tired. And to be fair, a lot has happened this week. I feel like I've done a lot, even though like I kind of had yesterday off, but then like emotionally, I did not have it off <laughs> with our furniture provider pulling out on, on us so suddenly, which I'm feeling really content with now that I've had like a day to sit with it and actually gotten to the point where I'm really excited now because it means we do get to refresh the studio space and I think it's going to be fine with all of our customers because the furniture we replace is going to be like similar like we're going to replace the cream sofa with a cream sofa we're going to replace the buffet stand with another buffet stand so I think it's just going to give the studio a nice refresh and a nice look for our customers which is just really a positive. But that was why I didn't film anything today because it's just it's just been boring. Um, and I'm going to wrap up this vlog here because I'm so exhausted. I can't think of more entertaining content to like share with you guys but like I, I don't have the mental capacity to make cute montages anymore okay guys. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the brief montages and the cute angles in the previous days but today is not one of those days and I'm dressed and ready to go to the gym it's almost five o'clock here so I have now somehow just been scrolling on TikTok and missed my like four o'clock start at the gym which is when it's a little bit quiet there so now we're gonna be hitting rush hour but it's fine we're gonna get the workout in we're gonna get it done and yeah that's my week thanks for coming along make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next entrepreneur diaries vlog